and DNA and excessive free radicals uh, damage from free radicals has been linked to the development of heart and uh, Alzheimer's diseases breast and prostate cancers and premature skin aging among other things so there are a number of different uh, antioxidants besides vitamin C uh, which of course you can uh, increase in your diet by having a higher uh, intake of fruits particularly citrus fruits have high vitamin C but things like broccoli have high vitamin C too I know not everybody enjoys broccoli but the key to that uh, and by the way I've always loved bro broccoli so I consider myself to be very lucky uh, it's not something I've had to get used to or or try to find new ways to cook I just have always enjoyed it uh, but for others you may need to find different recipes uh, and if one or, uh, or another vegetable doesn't agree with you or you don't like the taste there are many others that have the same kinds of advantages you just have to uh, you know look uh, and get the information and so maybe you don't like um, eating spinach so much but if you eat lettuce you're getting a lot of the same leafy green uh, goodness that you need uh, maybe you don't like kale but you can tolerate uh, uh, you know uh, something along the lines of uh, of, of uh, spinach maybe has a better taste so uh, those are all things to consider when you're changing your diet but let's look at some of the things uh, that are antioxidants that we can add to the diet to help uh, minimize these free radicals. <clears throat> so one is called lycopene. Lycopene uh, is in uh, a lot of vegetables that have red colors. So red fruits and vegetables have uh, lycopene. So carrots, red peppers, tomatoes, uh, even pink grapefruit and papaya uh, have a lot of this lycopene Uh, red strawberries and cherries, however, just uh, just to note, uh, as a side note, red strawberries and cherries uh, do not have lycopene or aren't uh, much of a source of lycopene. But tomatoes, uh, tomato-based foods, have the most source of lycopene uh, in the typical American diet. So if you cook tomatoes uh, and uh, cook them with some, maybe some olive oil, uh, maybe a little marinara sauce, tomato sauce. Uh, you can increase that uh, intake of lycopene. Uh, now, there's nothing, uh, you know, to say you can't use the bottled sauces, but you're going to get more benefits the more you can uh, make stuff yourself. So if you can uh, manage to make your own sauce, not that hard to do, actually. Uh, there, there are canned tomatoes and tomato paste available and uh, seasonings that you can uh, throw into a crock pot and slow cook for a few hours and boom you have your own sauce made to order uh, you can look for recipes online <coughs> there's many of them so uh, introducing those vegetables like tomatoes uh, if you like watermelon we're coming up in spring and summer it's the watermelon season so uh, those can be a good source of it uh, eat some carrots if you can like if you can uh, uh, throw some carrots in your salad or something like that uh, if you like grapefruit papaya is also a very good source so lycopene important antioxidant very powerful uh, now another thing you may have heard about uh, is the Mediterranean diet. It's another way of boosting the immune system, getting rid of those free radicals. Uh, and it's a composite of the traditional cuisines of uh, the Mediterranean, Spain, France, Italy, Greece, uh, Crete, and some parts of the Middle East. It emphasizes fruits and vegetables. It emphasizes fresh fish and dairy products. This is not a weight loss diet. 
but it can help you to lose weight. Now, I'm not a big fish eater. I never have been. Uh, salmon and tuna fish are the only ones that I can really do. Uh, plus, my concern about uh, uh, mercury levels and overfishing, uh, in which we don't even know the fish we're eating, um, makes me very cautious about uh, fish. But um, we can focus on the other aspects of this diet and perhaps uh, use something else to substitute for fish. But it's an important diet because the health benefits from it are uh, uh, really quite uh, quite astounding. The, uh, research is, has linked it to uh, lower risks of heart disease and cancer, lower risks of uh, metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome is uh, uh, the the uh, uh, it's also called syn syndrome X uh, metabolic disease uh, it's uh, an insulin resistance syndrome it can in uh, dramatically increase the risk of heart disease stroke and diabetes uh, and uh, some of the risk factors for having this metabolic syndrome is a uh, 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 waist circumference for it's uh, 35 inches for women and at least 40 inches for men uh, if you have a fasting blood glucose of at least 100 milligrams uh, uh, serum triglycerides at least 150 milligrams uh, if your blood pressure is at least 135 over 85 uh, these are all signs that uh, you're vulnerable to metabolic syndrome. Mediterranean diet can help decrease those those uh, uh, symptoms, if you will. How does it do it? Well, uh, it can lower uh, rates of chronic diseases, decrease blood pressure, and reduce cholesterol, as well as protection uh, protect from diabetes, depression. Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and some dental problems. Uh, it is very helpful in reducing inflammation that causes things like rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, it's good for your eye health uh, and can reduce your risk of, uh, of arthritis and stroke, all of these things. Uh, it's been g gaining quite a lot of traction, uh, you know, uh, here in the in the states. Uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's very popular among uh, older college edu educated people, uh, also non-smokers. And apparently, according to research, popular among uh, black college-educated uh, folks and folks who had an annual income of at least $75,000. Well, maybe not all of us have that, but you can still eat like you do. Uh, in Greece, meals include an average of nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And if you want to adopt the Mediterranean diet, you should aim for seven to ten servings daily. Now, uh, those servings can be in salads, they can be in soups, they can be done in a variety of different ways where you don't have to count, okay, one, uh, two, three, you can mix them all together uh, and do it in a way that uh, isn't uh, uh, overwhelming in, in trying to keep track of. Uh, now, also another change is to switch from the use of butter or margarine and emphasize use of olive oil, which is a much more heart healthy uh, monosaturated fat. Uh, uh, eating bread dipped in olive oil, it's very tasty. I mean, once you do it and you get used to it, you don't even 
want to have the butter anymore in, in, in many cases. Uh, wine drinking in moderate amounts can be very helpful. You can eat all kinds of fruits and vegetables, nuts, uh, legumes, uh, unrefined cereals, that's, that's whole grain cereals, olive oil, which I mentioned, uh, and the dairy products like yogurt and natural cheeses, uh, and, uh, and fresh fish if you're able to eat fish. Uh, you can still have red meat, but it is limited to about one meal a month. Uh, and similarly, you can have eggs and poultry and some sweets, but they are eaten occasionally, not daily. So this is not a structured weight loss plan. As I've mentioned, those rarely work. This is a style of eating, uh, something that you can gradually change and get used to. Uh, and the the key to it all is enjoying and wanting to eat it, wanting to eat these foods, uh, so that you don't have cravings to eat other foods that are bad to, for you, uh, because you are eating foods that are good and that you can enjoy. Now, according to a five-year study, it was published in uh, 2016. Adults who had type 2 diabetes or heart disease risks who remained on the Mediterranean diet actually consumed more fat than those who were assigned to a controlled diet and advised to reduce dietary fat. Those on the Mediterranean diet gained less and ended up with lower waist circumference than those in the other group, and that's the goal. Uh, So the Mediterranean diet can be really helpful, and uh, it's considered to be one of the world's healthiest diets. Uh, most people like it because uh, you can have a wide range of flavors and uh, all kinds of uh, things, and you don't feel restricted. Uh, plus, it's something that uh, you know uh, you can use as part of a uh, you know, package of things that you do. Uh, with your family or social uh, gatherings uh, and uh, these are things that you can you know have as part of your shared meals too so Mediterranean diet will definitely help support the immune system uh, all right now it's time to uh, take a look at uh, the uh, the gut, if you will, your gastrointestinal health, uh, which is sometimes overlooked, but it's a, an important aspect of your uh, uh, healthy immune system. Uh, we have uh, uh, you know healthy um, healthy things in our guts, basically, uh, and. Uh, you can, uh, if you don't have enough of these, you can suffer from uh, things like irritable bowel syndrome uh, or just occasional constipation, gas, indigestion, all of those other things that are uh, difficult and sometimes embarrassing to deal with. Again, simple changes to your diet can help. Uh, so some of the things that you can find uh, now one recommendation is psyllium which is a dried seed husk from plantains uh, I found them very difficult to find um, but they can be helpful in, in if you can find them they can be helpful as a use for a laxative Probiotics are a little easier to find. Uh, you can find probiotic supplements pretty much at any grocery store these days. They provide the friendly bacteria that you need in your gut to help stabilize the digestive tract. 